Hello, thank you for inviting me to share my views on is cancer a genetic disease? Let's see. Before that, let us uh, see the current update on the biology of cancer at cellular level and why cancer research is still such a big problem. That is because of the global burden of cancer incidence. And we will see a few very characteristic. Uh, uh, we'll see few characteristics of cancer, which makes it so complex. Okay, so at cellular level, cancer has been identified for its uh, very unique and uh, uh, signature characteristics, which are known as hallmarks of cancer. These were de described by Robert Weinberg and Hannah Hahn in 2000. And as you can see, a decade later, the number of characteristics identified have increased and uh, to 10 hallmarks. And a recent addition of three new hallmarks is uh, published uh, in January. So this shows us that cancer, though, is a her very heterogeneous disease. There are many cellular characteristics which are overlapping amongst various cancers. And what is the blueprint for this? Of course, DNA. And that is why cancer can be considered as a genetic disease. Now, this slide, I am sharing a very authentic site uh, to know the global cancer burden. What is the actual incidence across five continents? What are the trends of various cancers, gender-wise, age-wise, type of cancer-wise? This is the authentic source which we can refer to time and again to get an idea about the global load of cancer. Now, cancer doesn't happen overnight. This slide shows the time taken and the uh, clinical course of development of cancer. As you can see, uh, during this period, it is invisible. Not the patient, not the doctor can have any idea about whether cancer is taking place uh, normally. Okay. So, this first palpable tumor, palpable meaning clinically identifiable tumor, forms when there are about 10 raised to 9 cell mass has occurred in the tumor mass. Uh, before that, one may be able, to, one one can uh, pick it up on the X-ray, and as the number grows, the organ it is incompatible with the organism's life, and around one billion, uh, and that there is death of the person. So what this shows is that the process of cancer formation is uh, slow and long. And before it reaches that clinical uh, noticeable level, there are many events taking place. Uh, so, is there any way to catch cancer early? And yes, there is a norm that cancer can be cured if detected early. How to catch it early? American Cancer Society has given this acronym CAUTION. CAUTION, what it means is shown on the slides. And this is a very important uh, general trivia about cancer, which I thought will be very uh, useful for the uh, August audience here. Uh, so, these are the various uh, warning signs, which may indicate that uh, the uh, further laboratory and clinical assessment is required to rule out the presence of cancer. Okay. Now, we uh, go back to our topic how cancer is a genetic disease now it is very much complex the etiology is complex its uh, histopathological subtypes are complex and it is heterogeneous so it is a genetic disease yes answer is yes but there is an interplay of complex etiology so we will uh, i have uh, formed my uh, presentation on uh, basically two uh, aspects one genetics and cancer where we will talk about the constitutional genetics which means the genetic 
कम जेनेटिक मेकअप अ पर्सन इज बॉर्न विथ वट हैज दैट टू डू विथ कैंसर ऑनसेट और कैंसर प्री डिस्पोजिशन एंड हाउ डज इट हेल्प इन फॉर क्लिनिकल मैनेजमेंट एंड रिसर्च सेकेंड एस्पेक्ट ऑफ माई प्रेजेंटेशन विल बी जेनेटिक्स ऑफ कैंसर दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एक्वायर्ड जेनेटिक्स वट आर द इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ नोइंग जेनेटिक्स ऑफ कैंसर सेल्स फ्रॉम बेंच टू बेड साइड वट आर द ट्रांसलेशनल वैल्यू ऑफ दिस रिसर्च सो यस कैंसर इज अ जेनेटिक डिजीज and we will try to see at two different levels how genetics plays a role in cancer whenever genetics comes into our mind uh, we discuss about genetics uh, what comes to on our mind is uh, something related to heritability and something related to dna so first let us talk about the dna uh, meaning the mutations in dna mutations lead to cancer generally and of course there is qualitative and quantitative aspect about it so what is the baseline frequency equation one may ask and what are the chances of acquiring the mutations so let us look at the numbers uh, we are made up of around 10 raised to 14 cells and there are about 10 raised to 16 instances of cell division in a lifetime of a person and as we know dna replication is not full proof so the around 10 to the minus 6 mutations per gene per cell division is the baseline rate the spontaneous rate of mutations so there are 10 to 10 occasions it can turns out that uh, these many occasions are there for a gene to get mutated uh, isn't it very high then why cancer is so infrequent so luckily single mutation is not enough and this very well worked out multi step model of colon cancer demonstrates that there uh, over a period of time for converting a normal uh, a mass of normal cells to carcinoma requires multiple dna and epigenetic changes in this case loss or mutation of uh, gene sitting on 5q chromosome dna methylation activation of activation of keras oncogene loss or mutation of ts gene on 18q and finally p53 gene mutation this shows that single mutation is not enough and it is all a matter of chance uh, that all the right combination of mutations take place in the cancer cell so now uh, we need to understand the complex etiology of cancer uh, soil and seed this is used to explain cancer and basically cancer metastasis which was uh, given by stephen paget uh, what it means is uh, soil meaning uh, is it environment and seed meaning our genes our genetic makeup so th there are four different combinations possible regarding cancer etiology cancer onset so environment uh, uh, environment as well as genetic makeup or i have written here loosely genes so role of both as you can see here or role of uh, none is also possible so spontaneous uh, cancers or uh, which take place without any extra role played by environment or genetic uh, can be uh, uh, described as act of god maybe and there is a, a category where it is proven to be totally uh, uh, caused by the environmental agents like microbes chemicals and lifestyle like uh, obesity sed uh, sedentary lifestyle uh, tobacco smoking and uh, uh, there is a long list which one can find from the website of irc uh, international agency for research on cancer there are monographs for each and every entity listed here these monographs compile the information or the updated research uh, regarding the possibility of cancer cause uh, cancer causing ability of these 
environmental agents. So this is not the part of my talk because we are addressing the question is cancer genetic, right? So I'll be concentrating more on uh, this part where there is uh, uh, the role of only genes and negligible role of environment and of course the interactions between the two. So there are four parts as you can see here which we will discuss one by one. Okay, so cancer is a disease of the genes. So can we say that there are cancer genes which cause cancer? Yes. What are cancer genes then? These are alleles of normal genes which are mutated. Cancer gene does not come from outside. As mentioned in a chapter in a book by Robert Weinberg, it is an enemy within. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, exception is the cancer caused by virus. So, how are the can cancer genes acquired? They can be by via germline, meaning person has inherited the genes and it is present in the germ cells as well as somatic cells. This leads to the possibility that it, this can be transmitted to the next generation. About uh, 10 to 15 percent of cancers are due to the inherited germline mutations. Now, there are also acquired that, uh, and spontaneous mutation. Acquired meaning they are in the somatic cells. The person uh, gets the consequences of this mutation but not the progeny, not the next generation. And the third is viral infection. Virus, uh, they can transmit genes and sometimes they do not uh, play a role by transmitting the gene but by altering the environment which facilitates the cancer cell growth. So, when cancer takes place, all the normal cell regulation or cellular homeostasis is disturbed due to the uh, cellular machinery, molecular machinery uh, being affected. There are three types of genes which play a role uh, in cancer onset when they are mutated. Uh, so they can be categorized as oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes. Let us see one by one. So, uh, as I said earlier, the genetics and cancer we are discussing. Here, the germline cancer genes, uh, by cancer genes, what we mean is the normal genes which are, which are mutated to become oncogenic. So, majority of these genes are autosomal dominant in nature and increased risk is of cancer is transmitted in Mendelian fashion uh, because the genes are uh, the faulty genes are inherited only a, a, a second allele needs to be mutated and this acquiring second mutation becomes much rapid as we will see in the example of uh, retinoblastoma and one uh, mutated cell giving rise to more is known as clonal evolution this is a unique feature of cancer cells and here the cells that carry cancer genes these are selected for clonal expansion so this shows that when the father is affected and married, married with the un unaffected mother what you find is even single copy of uh, the mutant gene is enough to affect the progeny with cancer regardless of the uh, gender in this case. Okay, so this shows the autosomal dominant inheritance pattern of uh, tumor suppressor gene or the uh, dominant cancer gene. So what are the examples of uh, this kind of inheritance pattern in cancer? Uh, let us call them syndromes because they are collection of multiple uh, symptoms, multiple clinical presentations. Uh, retinoblastoma was the milestone here because that was the first disease where uh, the gene uh, was identified and coined to be a tumor suppressor gene. Similarly, familial adenomatous polyposis, this is a type of colon cancer. HNPCC is also a type of colon cancer. 
Lee Fromini syndrome is uh, caused by the germline mutation in the master guardian of the genome, uh, P53, and other examples shown here. So these are extreme examples, but then uh, these mutants, or let us call them variants, the frequency of uh, uh, alleles being abnormal and what is their role or what is their contribution in causing cancer so in the terms of genetics we may call it penetrance right so the commonly occurring the allele frequency type of alleles which are more frequent in the population they show low penetrance so this explains that in spite of carrying few mutant or variant genes person does is not sure to develop cancer is not destined to develop cancer rather but those which are rare and they show high penetrance uh, which are rare they show high penetrance their relative risk is much higher and they are found in lesser number of people in between there are rare variants which have moderate penetrance so this uh, three categories of variants meaning genetic altered uh, altered genes they impart various degrees of cancer risk relative risk of cancer and this source is from the nci website and this is a article which is made for the clinical oncologist uh, for to help them in genetic counseling we will see the details next okay so we are talking about three types of cancer genes let us first talk about tumor suppressor genes when there is germline inactivation of tumor suppressor gene uh, alfred nutson he uh, published a very nice and simple paper in uh, proceedings of national academy of sciences where by observing uh, the uh, uh, small cohort of retinoblastoma patients uh, who had bilateral retinoblastoma versus uh, unilateral retinoblastoma and statistically he gave this possibility that if person is already born with one mutant gene and acquires the second one then this is sufficient to cause uh, cancer whereas in normal individual both the uh, mutants both the hits or both the mutations are acquired later in life so both the events are very rare so it takes longer for them to develop cancer uh, a cancer of the eye and also uh, it becomes uh, it uh, they acquire cancer little later in life okay so when tumor suppressor gene is inactivated what happens is tumor is no more suppressed so these are the genes which play a role like brake. A car can run if accelerator is on, not only that, but if brake is not working, right? So if brake is failed, it is sufficient to make the car, keep the car running. Uh, and secondly, other scenario is when accelerator is always on. So, <clears throat> okay. So this is explanation for the first hit and second hit and what is the difference between hereditary tumor and sporadic tumor. Sporadic is opposite of uh, hereditary which means that uh, the, both the mutations are acquired later in life. Okay. So next scenario is accelerator is always on. So germline oncogene activation uh, leads to this scenario. And when oncogene is normal, it is known as proto-oncogene. So there are various housekeeping genes which are potentially oncogenes. They have capability of causing cancer when mutated in a certain way. So in normal cells, proto-oncogene proto expression is finely regulated <coughs> and they are turned on and off uh, during various steps of cell cycle which maintains the cellular homeostasis so proto-oncogenes they have very important role in pathways which uh, are induced in response to external stimuli 
received at the cell surface and responsible for the basic uh, uh, steps of cell doubling like DNA synthesis, cell growth and division. So, we can understand that when these genes are mutated, this cell proliferation will be abnormal. And third, uh, the, this is the part which, is, uh, which imparts extreme uh, sensitivity to uh, cancer is uh, germline defect in DNA repair genes. So, what happens here is DNA replication as we know is not foolproof but the DNA repair machinery takes care of the baseline mutation rate. But if this DNA repair machinery is not up, so xeroderma pigmentosum is one such example where there is a tendency for uh, hypermutability uh, which is observed by cytogenetic assays uh, in terms of the parameters called sister chromatid exchanges and chromosome abrasions in response to uh, exposure to UV. So, uh, as well as certain chemical mutagens. So, the extent of damage uh, by exposure to these uh, uh, DNA damaging agents is so high that it increases the risk of cutaneous, the skin cancer after sun exposure and uh, malignant melanoma, which is a skin cancer. The frequency is slightly higher than other car type of carcinomas. So, uh, this is res autosomal recessive Sec uh, and what is sister chromatid exchange is shown in this slide. Uh, this is known as harlequin staining because of the appearance of the chromosome where one strand is lightly stained, second is darkly stained and as shown by the lines over here, the exchanges between two uh, sister chromatids the extent of these exchanges increases which is which was considered as a marker for uh, genotoxicity similarly this is another parameter of genotoxicity which is uh, uh, small nuclei formation uh, this shows genetic damage uh, structural damage this is high uh, in this uh, patients of uh, xeroderma pigmentosum how does a patient look like? This figure shows the person develops this kind of uh, lesions on the skin. And this gives the clinicians a clue to examine whether person has uh, xeroderma pigmentosum. So, a second such example is ataxia telangiectasia, uh, where there are uh, the people, uh, these people uh, develop T cell malignancy at a high frequency. They are hypersensitive to X ray, and it is uh, reported that the ataxia telangiectasia mutated. This is the name of the gene, ATM, is mutated in many, uh, a majority of the cases of uh, ataxia telangiectasia. <clears throat> Next is uh, Fanconi's anemia. This is also a chromosome instability syndrome where there is progressive bone marrow failure and there is increased risk of cancer. This can be considered as a pre-malignant -pre condition also. Uh, cytogenetic presentation is uh, spontaneous chromosome breaks at a higher level and they show hypersensitivity to clastogenic effect meaning the DNA breakage effect of various uh, chemicals like dipoxybutane, metamycin C and likewise and there are uh, there is high incidence of myelodysplastic syndrome or acute non-lymphocytic leukemia in patients of Fanconi's anemia. The genes have been identified which increase the risk of developing Fanconi's anemia. These are some of the cytogenetic abnormalities the chromosome level uh, analysis shows by using proper uh, standard protocols of uh, short term cultures of uh, blood lymphocytes. One can compare the extent of damage in terms of such structural 
chromosomal breakage with controls and uh, one can get do the statistical analysis to see if the increase in uh, damage is significantly higher similar example is of blues bloom syndrome uh, another very uh, commonly known genes braca1 and braca2 are also the members of this class dna repair defects and uh, one thing we need to understand is even if these genes are mutated uh, germline mutation of these genes how much risk does it uh, do they elevate for breast cancer only in 5% of patients these are found to be mutated which means that though these genes uh, are responsible for increasing the risk they are not sufficient to cause breast cancer so this is about uh, we can call it penetrance and uh, this also shows that there are other genes also playing role in uh, breast cancer so dna repair disorders they do predispose make the person more vulnerable to develop malignancies as uh, at uh, some rate which can be with or without exposure to the uh, harmful environmental factors so hereditary disorders which predispose to cancer through unusual sensitivity to common carcinogens explains as a scenario that why not all tobacco smokers develop cancer right so this explains that the difference in genetic makeup uh leads to differential sensitivity to the environmental exposure so the term which was used in a textbook is ecogenetic trait so another example of ecogenetic trait is epidermodysplasia variciformis here papilloma virus and ultraviolet rays they act as co-carcinogen to produce squamous cell carcinoma of the uh, carcinoma of the skin in these genetically susceptible individuals this is how the person's skin looks like these are benign skin lesions of epidermodysplasia variciformis uh, an example of ecogenetic trait similarly uh, hepatocellular carcinoma a type of liver cancer it can be formed spontaneously also and the risk to develop is increased when person is exposed to alpha aflatoxin b1 aflatoxin b1 source is through uh, fungus infested uh, groundnut uh, generally and but this does not happen with every uh, person consuming this but those having genetic variation in an enzyme epoxide hydrolase Uh, can be more susceptible to develop uh, hepatocellular carcinoma so this explains that yes environmental factors are all there but finally it is the person's genome which decides how much or what will be the effect of the environmental exposure and again the strong association with cigarette smoking is there but uh, in case of hereditary factors Uh, the effect of cigarette smoking is not found to be uh, similar in all so uh, again there is role of many enzymes here uh, like uh, sip family of uh, enzymes uh, the genes where they, when they are polymorphic they are responsible for detoxifying the carcinogens in tobacco and when there is genetic variation in these enzymes the susceptibility to develop lung cancer also differs from person to person and that is why the though we know tobacco as a lung uh, as a cancer causing agent the effect is not same in all and that is why maybe it is it cannot be easily uh, something which can be banned uh, next is uh, abnormal tissue architecture juvenile polyposis this is an example which is of course due to the germline mutation in two genes which uh, causes the presence of polyps in the colon 
and presence of polyps predisposes a person to develop cancer. So, this is a factor of abnormal tissue architecture. This is another example. And the last example is uh, or the category is uh, humoral tumor promoters and repressors. So, circulating factors like hormones and components of immune system, they play a role in tumor uh, promotion or, they, or progression. So, genetic disorders which cause immune deficiency or an abnormal hormonal milieu can lead to increased risk of cancer. So, this explains why there is so much heterogeneity in cancer uh, predisposition. Uh, another example is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, cancer due to genetic predisposition uh, is also uh, seen in uh, one person and not in the family, not in more uh, members of the family, but then sometimes there are familial cancers and, or one can say hereditary cancer or people describe it as uh, this runs in our family. So, there are two categories, familial cancer and hereditary cancer. Let us understand how they differ. Uh, by definition, by NCI, hereditary cancer is family history of similar cancer for at least three generations where uh, associated germline mutations confer a high lifetime risk of cancer. Then, what is familial cancer? Though they sound very uh, synonym, uh, uh, I mean they are used like synonym, but uh, this refers to familial occurrence of cancer, which is not necessarily due to inherited cancer predisposition. So, cancer patients with first or second degree relatives having same cancer can be referred to as familial. So, there is a slight difference between the two. So, uh, is there any clue by which one can identify if this is a sporadic cancer or it is due to the inherited cancer predisposition? Because if this is the first case in the family, there is no way to know uh, whether it is a familial or hereditary kind of a case or is it a sporadic case. So, the observations, clinical observations are listed here. Uh, age of onset is much earlier in this case when there is inherited cancer predisposition. Like colon cancer at the age of uh, say 70 years is uh, not a surprise. But if somebody develops at around 30 years or 40 years of age, then it definitely suggests cancer predisposition, meaning inherited cancer uh, some cancer related gene mutation. Another thing, as we saw earlier that uh, the uh, acquiring a uh, full set of mutations for a cancer cell is also a matter of chance. So, that kind of lesion can be present in an organ, one lesion can be present. But if there are multiple such lesions, they are known as primary tumors multiple primary tumors in the same or different organs definitely uh, point to the possibility that one mutant allele is already inherited. Let us recall the two-hit theory, right? So, cancer uh, and next is cancer in successive generations mainly, but there are exceptions. And uh, breast cancer in male is also uh, something which is no, uh, non-typical gender for the tumor which indicates cancer predisposition. Now, certain ancestry like Jewish ancestry is known to be predisposed to breast ovarian cancer syndrome. So, ethnicity also is considered uh, before uh, for uh, giving genetic counseling. Uh, retinoblastoma, medullary thyroid cancer are also rare cancers which are rarely formed without uh, inherit, inherited cancer gene. Uh, now, clustering of cancer is known to be caused by a single gene mutation, like a person having breast and ovarian both cancers or colon, uterine and ovarian cancers is also a clue 
for uh, inherited cancer predisposition and here the role of uh, uh, genetic analysis is also uh, very prominent here when cancer is in presence of many precursor lesions uh, for example uh, adenomatous colorectal polyps so this is a benign condition but when person is already having the polyps then the uh, chances of developing into carcinoma is high next is uh, cancer in absence of well known risk if a person develops lung cancer without any history of tobacco smoke exposure even person is not a passive smoker let us say then this also indicates the uh, inherited cancer predisposition uh, yeah this was the point actually what i just said uh, genetic analysis dysmorphic features congenital anomalies uh, for example down syndrome cases are known to be lit having little higher risk of developing a type of uh, acute leukemia uh, similarly cancer in a patient or family with hereditary disorder is also a reason to consider a uh, possible link between that hereditary disorder and cancer like uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia for example so this table shows the uh, what which cellular mechanism is affected uh, like maintenance mechanism here it is it is written along with the name of the syndrome and which genes are mutated okay so that was about the familial or hereditary cancers due to genetic uh, inherited genetic risk but then there are also certain sporadic cancers meaning not necessarily clustering in a family but uh, due to genetic predisposition so uh, for that we have to again go back to the cancer biology which explains the multi step process of carcinogenesis so let us remember that cancer does not take place overnight so transition from completely normal to frank malignant malignant uh, appearance occurs through a series of steps so a cell may acquire one abnormal property like uh, immortality then become truly malignant when additional abnormal qualities develop so all this occur by hits or the mutations uh, in the uh, relevant alleles and which genes uh, when mutated play a role in cancer naturally those which are involved in regulation of cell growth and cell interactions so these genes can be mutated uh without uh, any exposure uh, environmental exposure uh, like uh, baseline rate of mutation where there is random chance during dna synthesis and cell replication or uh, due to exposure to environmental carcinogens like the known chemical mutagens radiation virus and in absence of both that is inherited germline mutations so this hits of in the both the alleles can be already inherited or it may be acquired later in life so what are the different steps of molecular progression of cancer uh, in the at this cell, cellular genetic level so here the uh, after uh, the initial events cells can become uh, we can show hyperplasia then Uh, hyperplasia meaning the number of cells increase with uh, uh, with uh, uh, some loss of differentiation then clonal dysplasia uh, certain neoplastic cells go growing in number and uh, in the terms of histopathology this is known as dysplasia then these cells may acquire ability for invasion and they may acquire new uh, blood vessels which is known as invasion and angiogenesis this makes the tumor more independent and also able to uh, uh, migrate to other places in the body which is known as metastasis and this is how 
uh, as the time passes uh, the progression from normal looking cell to frank malignancy to metastasis takes place and uh, during all this time the somatic genetic progression is seen and uh, the uh, host environment may favor the uh, presence of cancer so it is uh, uh, at this moment it is very important for us to look at the components of cancer genetic counseling what is the use of knowing whether genetic predisposition is there or not here comes the role of cancer genetic counseling so i have included briefly this part because it is very useful uh, when dealing with cancer and cancer research and cancer biology so who is a candidate for cancer genetic counseling that briefly i have summarized in this slide so how does the clinician decide that yes this is a case where genetic counseling is required so there are seven signs uh, and which other phenotypes signal hereditary cancer causing mutation so uh, these are uh, like components are the pre counseling explanation has to be given this is a very sensitive point so the patient has to be explained patient's family has to be explained family history has to be uh, collected properly uh, any presence of dysmorphology needs to be recorded uh, differentiating pattern of familial cancer from hereditary cancer as we just discussed right uh, in both bilaterally present or not multiple lesions are present or not age of onset is early or or normal and other things and so for uh, so there are various risk calculations available uh, dna testing is of course uh, uh, recommended but these are uh, prescribed by the medical person only now the uh, consumer uh, uh, selected dna testing is available but then without proper medical guidance observation and supervision the results can be very confusing for the person uh, now very sensitive point in cancer genetic counseling is uh, person has to be asked uh, may, has to be made uh, made to sign whether person wants to know the results of dna testing or not uh, because there are many psychological and other implications here okay so cancer genetic counseling can lead to uh, again the hetero uh, heterogeneous and confusing scenario uh, so expected results if they are true positive or true negative it is easy to deal with but sometimes they are uninformative or sometimes the results are not clear like variant of uncertain significance this is a term used in genetic analysis as per the american council of medical genetics guideline so what to do next the decision uh, making is based on the uh, results and the guidelines have been laid out for that if it is true positive what should be done uh, if it is true negative then Uh, what should be advised and what to do when it is uninformative this becomes in, uh, important for the research purpose but when it comes to giving advice to the family or the person it uh, needs to be tackled very uh, carefully and that is why the genetic counseling and cancer genetic counseling courses are run which uh, equip the person to give proper advice which is technically sound similarly uh, i am not going into the detail of this uh, slide uh, all we need to know is the outline of uh, the genetic analysis in cancer and how to deal with this result so variant of un uncertain significance this term has come into picture because of the technological advancement which has come now microarray and sequencing which gives more and more information uh, for which the clinical significance is not yet established okay uh, so in other words by this test results one can uh, get some idea about uh, the let us call it penetrance in view of the available literature so 
these are the most famous examples BRCA1 and BRCA2 females who carry this mutation uh, please note that their risk lifetime risk of acquiring breast cancer is not 100% right so but of course this is at the population level for the person it is either 0% or 100% but at population level what it means is that people carrying the mutation only 50 to 85% of them develop breast cancer only 15 to 60 percent of them develop uh, ovarian cancer during the lifetime so this tells us about what to expect in terms of cancer gene mutations and what could be the possible outcome so career risk counseling session is important when basic mainly when there is cancer running in the family uh, it gives them the information, support, options, hope and some uh, recommendation. So like one can take some educated and calculated risk and understanding. Uh, so uh, of course uh, Angelona, Angelina Jolly example is very famous. Everybody knows that prophylactic surgery she opted for. Uh, so this is this kind of outcome. Uh, comes when there is sufficient uh, evidence available or recommendation which person can take the decision. So this was all about the genetic makeup a person is born with which leads uh, which uh, plays a role in their cancer risk right. So this was my first part which answers that yes cancer is a genetic disease. Now what is the second aspect that is genetics of cancer which means that the cancer cells they are rarely genetically normal they are uh, genetically abnormal they acquire genetic mutations so here we are talking about not the person not the genetic makeup person is born with but the genetic makeup of the cancer cells okay so the findings go back to uh, 1890 when the scientist David von Hanselman he observed the abnormal mitotic figures and uh, he postulated that these abnormal mitotic figures are <coughs> present in cancer I, I mean these are responsible for cancer and uh, another uh, very milestone uh, uh, paper by uh, Bovary in 1914 he also gave an account of such abnormal mitotic uh, figures and uh, he proposed that it is the uh, feature of cancer cells so this observation started with uh, uh, the genetic component at chromosome level right because the time was not uh, at that time the dna was not identified nothing was known at molecular level so whatever was known was at the cytogenetic level earlier it was cytology then the new field of cytogenetics arrived which is a branch of biology that deals with heredity and related cellular components and at that was the time when only chromosomes were known so this is how the chromosomes are uh, obtained by short term culture of mainly uh, blood lymphocytes and they are arrested at metaphase and a specific bending technique or rather staining technique is carried out which gives such light and dark bending pattern across the chromosome pairs and it is uh, the chromosome pairs are uh, uh, arranged uh, this is known as karyotype and the abnormality in this karyotype is something which was linked with cancer for the first time so the finding of uh, cancer genetics or the field of cancer genetics has grown hand in hand with the progress in the methods for genetic study so it all started with karyotype so karyotypes are uh, described as per the standard guideline given by international system for human cytogenetic nomenclature and as i said with advent of more and more technology now it is human 
cytogenomic. Uh, that latest uh, edition of ISCN is not included here, so I have written here to be updated. So that was the black and white era, which gave lot of information, lot of uh, 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 information in uh, various uh, genetic conditions as well as cancer. And this was replaced by the colorful fluorescence in situ hybridization, where uh, which uh, was which uh, gave many advantages over the conventional karyotyping. These arrows um, show the regions on chromosomes which are known to be mutated in various uh, blood cancers. So these are the regions which are studied using fluorescence in situ hybridization for diagnosis of the blood cancer. But as we can see that there are so many different areas that one would want to study the entire genome in one go using some specific method. And this method was multiplex fish. This is just an example that how uh, instead of black and white, how each chromosome pair is stained with a unique color which enables identifying small uh, 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 chromosomal anomalies also. So this is uh, used by some very highly specific labs. And this shows that many different abnormalities, structural as well as numerical, have been identified. So this slide shows different uh, methods of uh, picking up genetic abrasions starting from cytogenetics, which means uh, karyotyping, fish, MFISH and spectro, spectral karyotyping, both are similar multiplex uh, 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 approaches, and of course, PCR. And uh, there are more methods like uh, chromosomal microarray and sequencing, which gives idea about the genetic aberration. And they become more and more sensitive, meaning they are able to pick up very small size of change, uh, genetic change also. So this slide summarizes. Uh, this is actually to show the advantage of MLPA. This is one method which can detect from point mutation to large chromosomal deletion. And uh, this shows the comparison, uh, I mean the compilation of all the available methods of picking up genetic abrasions. So genetic abrasions were earlier reported in cancer using karyot method of karyotyping. So naturally, there was the outburst of such case reports of different chromosome abrasions in multiple malignancies. Uh, Professor T.C. Shu from MD Anderson Cancer Center, uh, Professor Sain Pathak uh, from BHU, he has uh, also worked with him. And his statement uh, is something which uh, I think uh, is very important for the field of cancer cytogenetics, that each competently analyzed chromosomal aberration in cancer cell, remember we are talking about genetics of cancer, right? In cancer cell should be placed on record to contribute to the information pool. So this uh, keeping on putting on record has been carried out earlier by publications and then Felix Mittelman has taken up this work to compile all the cancer chromosome abrasions on this website. And this is another website, Atlas of Genetics and Cytogenetics. The updated link I have shared uh, on of this uh, site, which is also a very um, uh, useful tool to look at the cancer. Uh, genetic abrasions. So, Felix Mittelman took out books earlier, Catalog of Chromosome Abrasions in Cancer, uh, starting in, uh, in 1983, and look at the growth in number. So, the books were naturally replaced by CD-ROM and later website. Now, the website also is updated four times a year to in, 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 uh, include the new case reports published in cancer genetic aberrations. So numbers from 3,844 to in May 19, May 2019, the number was 
more than 69,000 and the recent one uh, just a few days back the number is seven, more than 72,000. Okay. So, this site compiles all the published and validated findings of cancer chromosome aberrations. One may wonder, oh, what is the point? Is it something like stamp collection? Uh, collection of case reports in cancer genetics, how does it help? So, this helps us identify uh, the commonality whether some particular cancer uh, aberration, cancer chromosome aberration is diagnostic of a type of cancer, does it tell us anything about the severity of cancer, the progression of cancer, is it useful in uh, predicting the response to therapy, okay. So, before we go into it, I will tell you what is shown in this slide. Uh, so, cancer chromosome aberration when we say let us first talk about the numerical type of cancer chromosome. Numerical aberrations are known as aneuploidy. What is normal? Euploidy. What is abnormal? Aneuploidy. Meaning the numbers which are not equivalent to the multiples of haploid number of that species. So, whether abnormal number of chromosomes are leading to cancer or is it because of cancer that we see aneuploidy? Let us see what all different uh, theories uh, explain this. So, is it it's a scenario egg before the hen. So, aneuploidy, rather abnormal chromosome number, they arise due to abnormal mitosis. Uh, mutations in genes which are which play a role in forming the mitotic spindle and its function are uh, known to be playing role in causing aneuploidy. So, the, uh, this is also a scenario where there is abnormal chromosome number and which can uh, start the cancer predisposition, which can contribute to cancer predisposition. Secondly, the aneuploid cells when they divide, if they are able to divide and they, if they do not die out, then the, num the chromosomal instability is found, meaning the numbers are not normal. And it is found that the, when the deployed, normal deployed num, uh, cell was fused with aneuploid cell, it was found that aneuploidy uh, was dominant. The normal cell also acquired aneuploidy. So, these various ex uh, experiments were carried out and it was found that uh, all chromosomes are equally affected. It's not that a particular chromosome is uh, lost or is more in number. And hyperdiploidy is more frequent than hypodiploidy. Hypodiploids uh, have many structural rearrangements also. Uh, we will see examples of these rearrangements in few slides. So, maximum 90 chromosomes instead of 46 may exist for viable, viable and proliferating cells in uh, cancer. I will uh, skip this slide. Okay. So, around how many mutations are required for cancer? Of course, this uh, number is not uh, something which is definite. But what it says is that out of about 20 to 25,000 genes, roughly about 350 are mutated in multiple cancers. Uh, so, there are overlapping genes also. 90% uh, of them uh, are uh, somatic, 10% are in both, and uh, so, 10% are also found in, are found only in germline. So, which means that there are multiple genes mutated. So, which, which gene mutation has, uh, is responsible for causing cancer? What is the first step? These are known as driver mutations or driver, driver genes. So, mutations which are necessary for forming tumorogenesis, uh, for the tumorogenesis are drivers. And those which occur due to the presence of tumorogenesis are known as passengers. So, yes, uh, we need to uh, find some way to make sense of so many mutant genes uh, to, uh, by identifying which are causing uh, cancer and which are due to cancer. So, the clonal expansion word can be understood in this slide. Uh, 
one mutated cell going on to proliferate and acquiring more mutations and the next level of uh, this mutant cell when it is it goes on to multiply and in the process one additional mutation is acquired uh, this cell has a potential to grow further so this is known as clonal expansion of tumor cells so now we can understand the role of driver mutation and then the passenger mutations this also explains this graph shows that incidence of cancer per lakh of people and age in years as we can see with increasing age the incidence is more why the previous explanation uh, uh, ex uh, previous slides explain this that yes it requires more time to acquire all the necessary mutations and that is that is why the age related increase in cancer incidence is observed of course there are uh, uh, exceptions and i'm sure now uh, by now you will be able to correlate why there are exceptions why some people develop cancer at an early age that is because already certain mutant genes have been inherited right okay so let us look at the genetics of cancer in terms of chromosome uh, aberrations so this can be numerical structural as well as both so structural arrangements meaning it can be uh, between different types of uh, different pairs of chromosome or inside the same chromosome so this is how the duplication leads to abnormal gene dosage where portion of one homologue is present in duplicate deletion can take place on the tips of the chromosomes or in the middle of the chromosome uh, deletion leads to loss of chromosomal material now we know that loss of chromosomal material meaning certain genes are lost insertion uh, can also be considered as translocation where there is exchange of genetic material between the between two chromosomes whether centromere is involved or not it has its own uh, consequence then translocation as i just uh, said so uh, let me share with you a brief Uh, and very important history of uh, chromosome of uh, cytogenetics in cancer in 1960 novel and hungerford described one small chromosome which is shown here as ph philadelphia it was from the lab which dis, uh, uh, from philadelphia in usa which described the chromosome uh, the name was given and as you can see this chromosomes are all solid strain there is no bending they thought it to be chromosome 21 because of the size right but uh, here uh, after some time uh, then when the bending technique was applied it was found that actually it was a shortened chromosome 22 and the part of it had translocated to chromosome 9 so janet rowley uh, uh, she described this uh, uh, abnormality as chromosome 922 and further molecular work was carried out which also identified the genes sitting on that uh, site of uh, chromosome 9 and 22 which was abl gene and bcr gene which means these two genes sitting on different chromosomes come together they form a fusion transcript which lead to abnormal protein uh, uh, from the uh, fusion transcript so in 1980 hester camp uh, described this bcr abl gene and the leukemia uh, causing capability was demonstrated in transgenic mice in 1990 and this was uh, research was taken further and a uh, therapy was also found uh, that because the bcr abl fusion protein it uh, encoded uh, for the uh, tyrosine kinase enzyme which was constitutively active which led to uh, uncontrolled cell proliferation remember the cancer uh, cancer cell hallmarks uh, so tyrosine kinase uh, this abnormal tyrosine kinase could be controlled by a drug called imatinib misylate uh, peter drucker was the person uh, the scientist clinician 
who uh, showed this results and there is excellent book called the philadelphia chromosome by jessica wapner which gives a very interesting account of uh, this uh, how this medicine which was so uh, effective to control uh, chronic myeloid leukemia that uh, we have also witnessed uh, the more than 10 years of uh, survival uh, for chronic myeloid leukemia patient taking this drug so i would uh, suggest uh, to uh, read these cancer related books which really give very excellent account of this field so this uh, novel protein from the chimeric fusion gene is also of uh, two different uh, molecular weights in acute lymphocytic leukemia it is uh, 190 and in chronic myeloid leukemia it is 210 so there are var different variants also and uh, so significance of genetic anomaly can be either uh, chimeric fusion gene uh, or it can be altered gene dosage which can be due to over expression for example her2 new gene simic gene or it can uh, altered gene dosage due to loss like retinoblastoma due to deletion the gene is lost and it is a tumor suppressor gene when it is lost tumor suppression is not there uh, next uh, the role of uh, chromosome cancer cytogenetics is much more evident in uh, uh, liquid malignancies like leukemia the uh, who classification for leukemia was based on the cytogenetic findings so this slide shows few examples how earlier only histopathology was used to uh, identify diagnose and uh, classify the leukemia so acute myeloid leukemia m2 type uh, now it is uh, diagnosed using karyotype or pish or pcr For, by detecting the fusion transcript AML1 ETO, which results due to translocation between chromosome 8 and 21, or in case of acute chromyelocytic leukemia, or which is APML or AMLM3, in which uh, the fusion transcript PML RARA, uh, chromyelocytic leukemia, and uh, retinoic acid receptor alpha, these two genes fuse together due to translocation between chromosome 15 and 17 uh, aml m4 uh, results due to inversion in chromosome 16 which brings together these two genes cbfb and mbh11 which are otherwise on a separate locations on chromosome 16 so this is the importance of identifying the genetics of cancer cells more examples uh, which are which show how who classification uh, took into account the cytogenetic abnormalities to uh, differentiate between uh, diff varieties of acute lymphocytic leukemia acute chromyelocytic leukemia based genetic anomaly could be uh, identified okay so uh, i'll quickly uh, give the another uh, ek, some category of chromosome aberration which are known as primary secondary and noise primary meaning those which are found uh, at the early stage of uh, carcinogenesis secondary which develop in cells which all which are already carrying primary abnormality and they are rarely found alone and they are less specific than the primary abnormality meaning translocation 922 for example is specific for acute lymphocytic leukemia and acute uh, and uh, chronic myeloid leukemia more in chronic myeloid leukemia but ca cells carrying 
ट्रांसलोकेशन नाइन ट्वेंटी टू प्लस से एक्स्ट्रा क्रोमोजोम एट इज साइन ऑफ कैंसर बींग इन एडवांस स्टेज मीनिंग कैंसर सेल्स हैविंग मोर एब्रेशन now this plus extra 8 chromosome can be found in other malignancies also right so secondary chromosome abnormalities are less specific and what is noise noise meaning uh, extreme cytogenetic variability with no two identical cells is also seen and this is found more in solid tumors so because of their uh, rare uh, uh, and single cells having this abnormally their role in pathogenesis could not be uh, easily uh, understand so they are known as noise but yes they do uh, indicate that there is a high level of genomic instability so what is the importance of somatic cell genetic abnormalities and role in cancer role in cancer management as well as in cancer research advancement what does it tell us so when there is translocation it gives us a clue that there is a gene sitting at the break point or there is a gene which was present on the deleted loci which could be playing role and so this molecular cloning led to identification of oncogene similarly specific recurring and non random anomalies they uh, are very useful as diagnostic markers and also they are of prognostic value what it means is presence of philadelphia chromosome confirms the diagnosis as chronic myeloid leukemia uh, or a type of acute lymphocytic leukemia and when this is identified when the numbers are known at diagnosis say 100% cells are carrying uh, this uh, abnormality following therapy if the numbers reduce what does it indicate it gives us an idea about the prognosis that yes the patient is responding to the therapy and if there are more number of more uh, chromosomal aberrations uh, seen uh, during the course of time one can predict that the prognosis is poor right uh, the third point is when there is translocation inversion as we have already seen these examples it indicates there is uh, this event has led to activation of oncogene or again uh, break fail and uh, accelerator always on scenario and inactivation or inactivation of tumor suppressor gene so this can lead to uh, point mutation and also due to translocation and inversion which means that this kind of cytogenetic aberrations give us a clue regarding Uh, the genetic locus where the uh, the uh, genes are affected uh, over expression of proto oncogenes uh, can take place in the uh, due to translocation uh, when they come into vicinity of some regular regulatory elements with the partner gene or fusion of two unrelated dna sequences from two different chromosomes as we have seen in many examples of uh, translocations like 821 1517 922 uh, what happens uh, when the chimeric proteins are encoded uh, they may promote growth and survival they may enhance self renewal they may block differentiation and thus contribute to one or more hallmarks of the cancer which we discussed in the beginning so these are the examples where oncogenes act got activated due to translocation these are all uh, the uh, leukemia that is blood cell malignancies so this is the uh, clinical significance and also basic research which i just explained uh, there are examples in solid tumors also so in bladder cancer breast cancer uh, head and neck cancer gestational trophoblastic disease uh, certain recurring and non random chromosomal anomalies found uh, the list is uh, long for lung cancer and other cancers also in solid tumors okay now let us see uh, the different types different type of uh, uh, categories of cancer genes 
cancer genes as we said uh, are not coming from outside they are our uh, uh, housekeeping genes but when they are mutated they can play a role in cancer but the degree of the role in cancer or the type of the role in cancer is very uh, can be different which are which is uh, uh, ex categorized as gatekeeper caretaker and uh, landscaper types of genes that when affected play a role in tumorigenesis gatekeepers are the genes with essential function in control of growth and differentiation so normally these genes uh, when they are normal they prevent tumor development by inhibiting unnecessary growth and promoting terminal differentiation as well as apoptosis uh, when these genes are mutated uh, they they increase the cancer risk by more than 100 times so this explains why they are known as the gatekeeper genes examples are retinoblastoma and the cell cycle related genes cdk2 and, and cdk4 when these genes are mutated they also increase the risk of uh, uh, these are tissue specific genes so rb gene a for uh, eye cancer these genes for melanoma and uh, similarly there are uh, genes for colon carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma of the skin so uh, th uh, there is also a hypothesis that there are gatekeeper genes some are common uh, and some are tissue specific Second category is caretaker where BRCA1 is the example as the name suggests. These are the genes responsible for uh, uh, efficient DNA repair and maintaining genomic integrity. So when these are mutated naturally these functions are lost which lead to hypermutability or increased uh, 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 genetic instability. Uh, so risk of cancer is modestly uh, elevated in these syndromes which are caused by germline caretaker mutations uh, sporadic tumors rarely have mutations in these genes uh, now landscaper the gene for uh, juvenile polyposis syndrome these act indirectly to cause cancer so mutations in these genes lead to tissue dysplasia but not necessary for development of cancer so they just facilitate the cancer progression so this means that there is nothing like one gene one cancer right there are multiple genes involved and out of collection of so many genes they may be playing role at very different levels and it also says that there are uh, multiple pathways which were involved in cancer so uh, 12 core pathways have been uh, described in pancreatic cancer and this number shows that what is the percentage of cancer tissue samples which showed abrasions in these pathways so as we can see not all uh, are showing 100% uh, KRAS signaling was mutated in 100% of the samples. This is from a published uh, uh, report and presented in ASCO uh, conference and this was in 2008. Uh, but I am just showing this as an example that this is the heterogeneous scenario which means that in a cancer there can be role of uh, there can be involvement of multiple cellular pathways. So now cancer is not looked at in terms of one gene or two genes but in terms of which pathway is affected okay so Bertil Vogelstein he uh, 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 after the successful uh, uh, human genome sequencing cancer genome sequencing was uh, attempted TCGA uh, is uh, the uh, site which uh, from which I had taken this slide uh, sequenced cancer tissue genomes of several types like breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreas and uh, the cancer genome atlas project uh, TCGA. Uh, many genomes are uh, sequenced and he proposed uh, 
that every cancer cell has driver mutations and passenger mutation as we discussed earlier. So, uh, the important uh, observation was that cancer is a pathway disease. Superficially, each type of cancer looks different from each other, but at the genetic level or pathway level, similar genes are mutated or similar pathways are dysregulated. This is a very important information and which can be used for uh, the diagnosis, prognosis as well as identifying therapy targets. So, uh, now we can summarize that yes, genetics of cancer tells us that there is genetic instability at the cellular level.